And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Taric Braum. We are going to be playing Braum with a bunch of gems with Mentor the Stones. And yeah, we're going Shards the Mountain. Two copies filling our hand with gems. And of course, the gift givers over in the one mana slot as well. And what we learned from a, a previous deck is that all the gems with Starlet Seer is really cool. Because, you know, you can play like three, four, five gems especially with like the shards of the mountain and now your next ally in your deck it's plus you know plus three plus three plus you know a, you know a bunch you can just really add those up with the starlet seers so that's really cool so that's what we're going to be doing here growing one of our allies of course pairing that with Tarek, um that can copy those spells for us also we're going to be playing three zenith blades to try to give overwhelm if we give some unit in our deck make something very large try to give it overwhelm and of course the zenith blade is great with Tarek as well so we're going to combine those together we got avros and hearth guard to also pump up something in our deck and uh then at the top end since we're going to be targeting our stuff a lot and supporting a lot we're going to go to arbor of the peaks also arbor of the peak overwhelm that's great and then if we can get that with starlet seer right like maybe we give something plus five plus five that could be the arbor of the peak then maybe it only costs like you know two mana and then we have like a two mana 11 11 overwhelm right like we're, we're gonna try to set this up we got some some stuff here uh we since we're gonna be buffing the things in our deck we want card draw in our deck so we're gonna have avarosen sentry pale cascade to help get that card draw in our deck um star shaping is for like the aggro decks and like these bilge water decks and stuff like that to get some nexus heal in just a little bit but this also could be pretty cool with Taric. That you could have like star shaping, target your Taric, heal your Taric five, and then uh, copy that over and heal the next thing five as well, and you get double invoke. That could be pretty cool. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah, that's our deck. So let's let's try to get Brom with some gems. Get a big buff Brom. Yeah, we got the buff deck in it coming all right so we'll play five games over in ranked having a bunch of buff units is good against these like ezreal decks and make it rain decks and all these de there's a lot of decks doing small amounts of damage and big buff decks are good against that kind of stuff All right, so I definitely want to keep Starlet Seer. Um, Braum and Shards of the Mountain. Sounds good. Could be a little slow against, you know, this Callista deck. We are playing two copies of Hush against They Who Endure. Definitely love drawing the Omenhawk. Tarek and Braum do take up the same spot on the curve at four mana. Is it worth it to Zenith Blade? Is it worth it to Zenith Blade like a Starless Seer? Draw a new Zenith Blade. Or just save... I should probably just save the spell mana and wait for that Zenith Blade till after these things are in play. Alright, taking four. Pass and turn. This is difficult which one to start with, Taric or Braum. We're going to have the attack token. So I can either have a 1-7 Braum with going Braum Zenith Blade. Or... We go Taric Zenith Blade and have Taric be a 3 6 tough attacking, and then also copy that over to Starless Ear as well. And then we get two Starless Ear abilities by playing Taric. So I guess it's probably Taric, but a 1 7 Braum sitting back blocking and challenging and stuff sounds pretty awesome too. So they both sound awesome. I guess we'll go Tarek. I am here. Ah, 
just season. So with that being an ephemeral Wraith Caller, we can certainly assume that the next turn they're going to be playing another Wraith Caller. And so against another Wraith Caller, I'm probably wanting to go Braum first over Gift Giver first. <clears throat> We're going to be playing Braum and, and uh, Gift Giver the next turn. Let's just which one at first. Oh, never mind. Star was here. Well, that's not what I was hoping for. I was hoping that they would be more scared off than just attacking with everything. Blocking the Yeti Yearling means they don't have the Yeti Yearling to... <clears throat> um, to block on uh, their side. Every gem you bestow reflects the um, of I don't like my Starlet Seer leaving, of course, but I guess that Starlet Seer used to be a. Uh, it used to be just a, a two three, and it traded with a four three. So I can't complain too much about that. All right, let's heal. They say these were from the protection. Alright, so that's himself. four. This would be a good winter. And then support is five. Recasting that is six. Elixir of iron would be seven. I guess I don't have to. I don't have to support Braum. To protect all. Good. This is fun, yes? Kind of want to support the Starless here. Oh, vermin. We should be friends. Fix up the heal these things. Just needs one spot. This is fun, yes? Never submit. Oh, an auspicious season. I am the protector of the mountain. I should I was kinda of running out of time. I should probably have the two three first so that they can't block the two three with the bark beast. That was that was a mistake there. Um but still that's fine. The two three goes away from the bark beast, then we can have our um omen hawk block the bark beast. Of course, I, I want to save this hush for they who enter, right? Like, that's probably the, the main way I lose this game is they who enter. Yeah, this set is is much more complex than Bilgewater, isn't it? Like, Targon, Targon's pretty complex. Yeah, so that was that was a mistake with that 2-3. Um, but I was running out of time. Hey, Soul Raider. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Soul Raider. I'll take it under advisement. Not, no guarantees that, that I'll play a uh, deck request, but I will take it under advisement. So that's the very first card after the, the Yeti died, was Enraged Yeti. All right, well, that's a lot bigger Braum than this one. And then War Mother's Call. Okay, that, that does seem like a pretty sweet meme tier deck. Stand behind Brom. The mountain endures. Sorry, Brom. 
I know you cool, you cool. How can Brom help? We must preserve life. Blessed by snow and stars. <laughs> this is what we call a handful of gems. All right, obviously we need to keep three mana for Hush for the 11-11. So then I can cast five gems. Uh, they don't tell me how big this Taric was going to be. Um, I think I just want to pump up this Overwhelm thing. An auspicious season. This would be a good winter. By snow and stars. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not planning on casting the blessing. Hmm. It's time to shine. Got to keep Hush available for Atrocity. Let's see. So I can kill... All right, so we could go Hush on the They Who Endure, turn it into a 1-1, one, one, and kill it. The only problem with that would be is if they have another They Who Endure plus an Atrocity. So I just don't think that's the plan. I don't think that's the best play. Because they who endure just can't kill me. We can't kill them this turn. And so we're just going to wait. We're just going to wait. We're going to kill them next turn. We're going to have something in the top of our deck is going to be really large. Okay. I guess it's a little risky having the 1 1 block the Taric. Yes, if you hush they who endure, it's, it's just a 1 1. It doesn't get any of this. This when I'm summoned, grant me plus 1 plus 1. It just turns back into a regular 1 1. Yeah, so I didn't. I know I could have killed the Endure last turn. I mean, I I could have, could have, but I just wanted to keep the Hush mana because if I if I would have done like all the gems and Tarek's blessing of Targon on the Brom and then challenge, if they had Atrocity, I would have just lost. So that's that's why playing. That's why we couldn't play this blessing of Targon last turn and try to do that on They Who Endure because we would have just lost to Atrocity. Blessed by snow and stars. Let's go into eight. And killing that thing. Oh, an auspicious season. There we go.
be a good winter. And this deck's pretty sweet. Blessed by snow and stars. <laughs> Starlet's here with all these gems. This is pretty sweet. Look at how buff our units are. Just taking down they who enters. <laughs> Everything just gets like plus six, plus six. Victory is a thing of beauty. There's a lot of cool things that we can do with gems. We're doing this here. We talked about Bubble Bear with gems. Um, J Medida with gems. Um, it's another thing. There's a lot of cool things that we can do with gems. Now, our hand last game was awesome. We'll see if it's as good again. Yeah, because we had like turn one Omen Hawk, Starlet Seer. You know, like we had an awesome hand. This hand looks pretty decent though too. So we'll keep this. I like the sentry to block and draw. And then you know we have we have a one drop. We have Starlet Seer, Tarek, and stuff. That egg. Did it move? Trade our one drop for their one drop. Hopefully we find one of our two copies of Hush again for a They Who Endure. Uh, I like I like the one mana of Elixir of Iron over Troll Chant, but to be honest, I haven't played that much Troll Chant, so I could be convinced that Troll Chant is a better card. Just haven't played too much of that card yet. But I'm really comfortable with the one mana Elixir of Iron. Can see the Demacian border from here. Ooh, what's that noise? They say these were from the protector himself. My original plan was to kind of heal this Gift Giver, but I kind of like the 3-1 Sentry just checking the 4-3s. Um, I kind of like that. How can end? That's, how, that's a question I ask myself every day. Yes. So I went after the hapless aristocrat instead of the spiderling because I think it, it is good to just kind of fill their board with spiderlings where they can't play other things because other things are definitely more valuable than spiderlings. Oh, that hurts. Light the signal fires. Ooh. That could be cool with Tarek and Braum. So could that. The spirits of the betrayed are restless. Yes, rest is very important. We fight for one prayer yard. Unseen, unheard. Wow, that unspeakable horror was awesome. So it's either so my my options are like play Tarek and then have Pale Cascade to go along with Braum, or we could just like Zenith Blade the Braum to start with with the Daybreak, and then also have Pale Cascade, or then you know be able to take heart after attacks. I think I go. I think I just get Tarek and play. You honor me with every blessing you give. Now, Tarek just gives both it and the thing it's supporting tough, and then just copies the very last spell cast. Does those two things. Doesn't just give every, like, doesn't just give all of its keywords to the next thing. That'd be very powerful. It does not do that. This will be a good winter! Friends. 
So Fury of the North doesn't kill Braum. And I think Callista is more important to kill than the Shade Stalker. But this is really nice, like how we're getting like the Starlet Seer abilities for both of these. We're you know, drawing cards. We got our Avros and Hearth guards. Dude, our deck is sweet. We just have to find Hush. Because the only way I think I really think the only way we're losing this is just getting cheesed out by they who endure atrocity. Right? Like I do, I don't think there's any other way we can lose. And so we gotta hopefully draw the hush. So being able to to double play Pale Cascades and draw two is good. There's two Hush in the deck. That's all we gotta do is find one. Uh, yeah, you're right. I should attack with the 5-5-2. Five, five, good call. Sweet. There's a Hush. So I feel pretty good about this game. Next turn we can Take Heart the Taric. Wait, how is Take Heart gonna work? I wonder how Take Heart works with Taric and then and then challenging something that's not damaged. I guess it wouldn't work because it would be not damaged. Oh well, it doesn't really matter with these these things. They're going to be challenging Taric. We're going to be casting Take Heart right now. Okay, it does work. You tried. Okay, it works. Okay. Well, people in chat are saying that it works. You are safe with well, just in case, we're going to do it. We're going to do this. this will be a good winter. No. My saplings. We have our two Starless Ears in play. Zenith Blade. Ah, oh, an auspicious season. Everyone's a garden. Yeah, I think maybe I just do this. I'm not going to give two things overwhelmed, but we're going to give another thing plus three plus three. We got more Zenith Blades to give more things overwhelm in future turns. Just have these little two ones that block. This is fun, yes? Yeah, I can attack with the Poro because like I don't even mind the you know I don't mind the Poro dying at all. Poro would do two damage to them. All right, so the one problem with this, though, is the Tarek's ability of <clears throat> my support ally and I can't take damage or die this round, and then Braum needing to survive damage. But if it can't take damage, it can't survive damage. But we don't need to. We don't need to support the Braum. We can support other things in the future. I'm really glad we have the hush. So we can't get cheesed out by they hunter. <laughs> Omen Hawk. We are going to I'm I guess Starlet Seer, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, Starlet Seer. I need to clear up one space. Lady Elise, where are 
I guess maybe two spaces. What's that noise? The War Mother will unite us all. Blessed by snow and stars. Doesn't really matter if I replace it before or after they attack. Oh, what's up, Mentor of the Stones? I forgot about you. <clears throat> okay. Might as well use the other Zenith Blade on the Taric, even though Taric already has Overwhelm. Then I'll just grow these. We're trying to kill them this turn. Like, we should be successful, because, like, best case scenario for them is they have, like, a, another They Who Endure, right? That, that doesn't matter. I don't think they can survive all this Overwhelm damage. I guess this thing is better to have in play than Starless Ear, I guess. This has to be the last turn for us. Gotta do 17 damage. Alright, so you support you, who supports you. And you're attacking, and you're attacking, and you're attacking, and you challenge this. So we have a total of 13 plus 7 is 20, plus 12 is 32. So we have a total of 32 overwhelm damage there in the middle. I don't think they can deal with 32 overwhelm damage. Especially not with the 17-17. The answer is nope, they cannot deal with 32 overwhelm damage. Hey, Statefulness. Be beautiful. Be beautiful. I'm not going to be playing it today. Alright, we're playing against Lux Leona. Let's just mulligan all of these spells. We'll keep the sentry. I like having Starless here. Clad in shining sunlight. These old eyes still see I miss Starless here already. So I can attack right now, and we definitely get two damage in. Or I play this, and maybe they have another shield bearer, and then I get zero. Or maybe they play like a one, two, and I get four. Sunlight guiding, my brethren. For the homestead. I suppose it's possible they block Can with the one two. Let me draw a card. I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna be using Pale Cascade. I want to just draw the card from Sentry and maybe find something better to do for turn four. Light the signal. So it should be the 15, 16. Cool. Good thing we didn't just play the Gift Giver out of our hand first, because we got this Omen Hawk, which is beta. Uh, three three things that we do know that will be reworked either in the next patch, like one of the next two patches. So either um, that one on the 15, 16, but or the um, or the patch after. We know that Lee Sin is going to get buffed. Ezreal is going to get changed on how Ezreal levels up. 
and Yordle Grifter's Allegiance is going to change as well. Those are three cards that we do know will change from what they said in patch 1-8. Nothing escapes my watch. Nothing. Scorching light. Hidden dragon. <clears throat> These jewels are more than me. I hope y'all are liking the new YouTube videos. How I've been spending you know, hours a day, three, four hours a day now. Um, editing the videos. I hope y'all have been liking that. Our strength is yours. So whenever, you know, opponents just sit there for a while, or sometimes it's me, sit there for a little while. i just trying to cut out the dead space. It's not perfect, you know, I don't, I don't get through everything. We'll follow you to the edge of daybreak. Our banner will lead the way. In Avarosa's name. I feel like attacking. I don't really like they can just kill these these things, and I don't really mind that we get extra damage in and clear and it frees up some space for me. Thanks, Bob. And creative doing a super job. Awesome, good. Glad glad y'all are liking that. Hoping that that really helps and, and makes a difference. Question now is do I use Pale Cascade to kill a 3-1? And that answer is no. Be brave. So why would they want to make this trade? Like, what is this attack about? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why they that they think this is a good trade now when they when they just didn't. So they could have just blocked all these just like this and saved ten damage, and they decide instead to attack. Okay, so it's gotta be Radiant Guardian, right? They want things to die for Radiant Guardian? You know, I'm trying to think of, like, why. And that's the only, the only thing that I'm thinking of is Radiant Guardian. Still, is that even that great? I think I keep Pale Cascade available because of single combat. Could be Re Remembrance also. They could have Radiant Guardian and Remembrance and play them both. We can use Star Shaping to fully heal... Avaros and Hearth Garden. All right, next turn seven mana. If we have one extra, I'll have eight. If I don't, I'll have nine. If I don't play Gift Giver, I'll have nine. Four, five, six, seven. No, we can probably. The journey is difficult. will protect you. Dude, new set is pretty awesome. Targon, we get to do lots of cool stuff. Like, play a bunch of gems with Braum and everything like we're doing now. Ooh, this Tarek's just bigger than the other one. We'll just play this Tarek. I don't think it's 50-50 aggro and control in the format. I don't think there's that much control. There's there's a good amount of aggro, but I mean, I, I think mid-range is still just the biggest... I think that's the biggest... Uh, kind of deck still. Behold the sun's holy light. Arbiter of the Peak. Dazzling. Get cheaper for me. Today we fight as one. Unyielding. Still both six power. So they can't block either and keep their things alive. Um, you know, they can trade with the 6-3, but they can't trade with the Taric. 
Uh, okay, yeah, you've been playing the, the Trundle Ramp deck. Okay. Stay back. Very nice. That's that deck's really strong. Okay, so now do I use Hill Cascade? And I think the answer is still no. They get to gain four, not five, because of the top that was only dealing four damage. So that's pretty good, getting rid of Remembrance and Radiant Guardian, getting rid of those things. Um, they have two extra cards in hand than what I have, but we got some good stuff. And we have played two Avros and Arth guards. Ten mana total. Every gem you bestow reflects the beauty of our world. Each is made in your name. Protecting. Probably casting star shaping. Tarek has taken four damage, right? This would heal at four. Pretty sure. I'm not going to behold a celestial card, so Comic Raids doesn't do anything. Living Legends could be pretty sweet. Great Beyond's pretty sweet. We're gonna go with Living Legends. <clears throat> I don't think they necessarily want to single combat. I'm gonna save this gem. I don't we don't really need to play this gem. I know, I know. We didn't get to copy the star shaping with Tarek, unfortunately. We do have the blessing of Targon. Alright, now I'm going to play this, because they could have single combat with the shield bearer. And try to fight, and then I could have Pale Cascade to have it survive. Six out of seven there. Ooh. Think I just open attack? Could just open attack. I guess not let them stun things. Remember my words. Could also just open attack. Honor the mountain. I am the protector of the mountain. Of the mountain. Could do that too. These can't take damage or die. I will protect you. Yeah, unfortunately, the extra Tarek in our deck is not going to be as good because it, it won't have the Avros and Hearthguard at plus one plus ones twice. GG's. I guess open attack works also. These gems aren't just for show. Have I decided what decks to play for rank up Sunday? Not yet, but I'm liking this one. Um, probably gonna play the uh, the Shadow Isles Bilgewater deck we played yesterday. Maybe this one. New hand. Can we get our one and two drops? Thank you. A little luck for those who need it. Ow. Remember my words. Fuse is lit. These gems brought to wear a harmony. All right, turning this thing into a 2-2 now to be able to block this Legion Grenadier. That wasn't really my plan. My plan was just to save the mana, save the gem. Put the gem over on Braum, kill the precious pet. Croak if you were burn if you don't! 
mystical levitation requires concentration. Victory at any cost! Protector, shield me! Shield me. I'm glad we have the star shaping to heal our Nexus. Five. Prob, we're gonna need that. So we're gonna have Braum. A gem with the Braum. Kill the precious pet, get a 3 3. For the Empire. Make the Empire proud. Could kill the 3 1. Transfusion's a card. Have you met my shield? I go after 3 1. Transfusion's a card. Should have gone after 3 1. The other thing about going after 3 1 is that would have been the Nexus damage this turn where they already had the Nexus damage. This doesn't block 3 1 as well. Neither of these are very good, honestly. And none of the, none of these are very good. I guess I'll take this thing that grants my other allies plus two plus two and overwhelm this round. It's Challenger, I guess. Don't worry. I am here. Maybe better just to go Starless here. I guess Starlet Seer doesn't help block this precious pet anyway. We're going to challenge Saboteur. I guess I could challenge Precious Pet and they deal two damage to me with the Saboteurs. Uh, no, we have Hush. All right, so we have Hush for Precious Pet. Okay, so we're going to challenge Saboteur. So therefore, I want three blockers. So we, we want Starlet Seer. Look sharp. We should be friends. Never submit. I just think that I just thought that was a free two damage, and I, I didn't really anticipate them blocking. I could see them just attacking with these two, or maybe they attack with all three. I guess. Never see it coming. Yeah, I'm glad they did that attack. This will be a good winter. Oh, an auspicious season. Stand behind Brock. The mountain endures. Fade Alright, down to five. We know they have some spell with, that they got from the spray fin. Down to two. Next turn is turn eight. Six, seven, eight. No prey, no pay. Okay. <sighs> They're out there. I'll spot them. 
No. GG's. He's had a really good hand. The, I mean, the spray fin. I mean, that was a great draw, right? Because they, they didn't have that spray fin before. It's so, like they drew the spray fin, which got, which got them Noxian Fervor. Also, so like their last their last couple of draws, spray fin into Noxian Fervor, then decimate. GG's. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> this that's the first time I've ever done that. All right, looks like we're keeping this in. That's the first time I've ever done that. I meant to click their deck to see to see exactly what we we're playing against, you know, because I was talking. And I clicked OK. I'll be fine. Leona or Lane Soul. I would have mulliganed the Shards of the Mountain and the Arbiter of the Peak. And kept Omen Hawk. Uh, Pale Cascade. But, you know, it's just one of those times where we mulligan the cards and they, they go back and put in your hand. Anyway. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. Fear beyond. Punish transgressions. Okay. Visa is a sea all. Another Starlet Seer. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. So Shards of the Mountain would be two Starlet Seer abilities. Fill our hand with gems, start using the gems. Um I hope they don't have the deal four and deal one card. It kind of feels like maybe they have that card how they just passed, but I'm still I'm still gonna be doing my thing. All right, well now I burn a card if I end round, but I burn all that mana. No, we still play this. Let's play it on this one though, in case they have the deal four, deal one. But I, I should still do that and get my top ally plus two, another plus two, plus two. Because they do have an ally on top, and I just, um, sure, I guess. I would have just wasted the plus two, plus two. I just did the turn before anyway. Okay. So, sentry. These old eyes still see far and clear. Definitely glad we played the gem. The dawn has arrived. Well, that's pretty nice. To shine like the sun, you must burn like it. Is that really what you must do? The sun's splendor reveals. All right, time just to start playing these things. Give something a plus. Three plus three. Ah, an auspicious season. Um. Blessed by snow and stars. And get these arbiters to be cheaper. We're gonna start playing them. Ooh. We'll see. I'll put this on here so they can't just kill it for free. So yeah, definitely assuming they were going to challenge there, and then we get to Pale Cascade. Blessed by snow and stars. I wish Arbor of the Peak cost three, not four. Um So I'm not going to draw another Zenith Blade. Our 
blessed daylight surrounds you. Just have all the daybreak cards. It's pretty nice. over to me many tribes under one banner my faith protects me glorious light rains down oh, an auspicious season I like doing the Zenith Blade on this thing instead of on the Avaras and Hearth Guard, so that if they play a Daybreak card and stun, it won't be, you know, they'll be stunning the Hearth Guard, not my Avaras and Sentry. Behold the sun's holy light. They have to run out of Daybreak cards eventually, right? This is the mountain's final test. Right? Like, they probably run out of these eventually. I get the Starless here. Plus one, plus two. And Overwhelm. Sure. Blessed by snow and stars. We are going to get another pretty large unit with like the Starless here, Savaros, and Hearthguard. So maybe I should have saved that for the next unit that's going to be pretty large. But, I mean, these are all pretty large, too. Awesome. Default dad plays. Glad you just crafted the deck. All right, so counting this up. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 6 is 27. Is so we have 27 overwhelm damage right now. So I got to block with at least 10. You There's 6, 7, 8, Four 9, carrots. 10. Well, ten. So that puts him to exact lethal. Face my shield. Ah, an auspicious season. Mentor the stones works well with overwhelm. So the good news is we have a very commanding board. The bad news is they do have five cards in hand. And that's kind of scary. And it's a really in soul deck. And they're about to have ten mana. And they got like Radiant Guardian and stuff. They think themselves cultured. So we can keep them from do you think they attack with their 10 10 maybe let's play this omen hawk first we can block with the omen hawk if they do darn they didn't mystical meditation requires concentration Oh, oh, really? Shine. Come on. Jerk. At my <laughs> hey, what's up, Trap? All 
All right, we're just gonna be open and open attacking. Today we fight as one. No. Approach. For the homestead. Hold back the darkness. No mercy for heretics. Gaze into the light. All right. Well. That's still them going to not very much life. Yeah, we, we just played a Nocturne Diana aggro not too long ago, if you want to compare it. I, I really liked the deck list. All the three ofs, I think, are amazing. Um, the, the two ones and the two of is where you can maybe change some stuff up. But here you go, pro. Here's the list that we played just a little bit ago. All right, so they played two of those gain fives. So this should not kill them. We are going to hush this so they don't gain five life. That's a good start. And we'll just kind of go from here. See what else they want to do with their three mana. Uh-oh. Make that 13 mana. All right, nothing. No concerted strike or nothing. <laughs> GG. Tarek Brom. Whoops. There we go. Four and one, and you know, it took a really, really great aggro hand to defeat us. The you know, the one game that we lost. Yeah, this deck was awesome. This deck felt really good. Love all this this buff um, that this deck is able to do. Definitely my kind of deck. I mean, I, I love playing Starless Seer. And Starless Seer with gems was pretty awesome. And then, you know, got the, the Zenith Blades with the Overwhelm were clutch. Too, getting a bunch of Overwhelm with these cards. They were clutch. This deck was pretty sweet. I liked the Arbiter of the Peaks. A little, a little slow. But they were pretty good, too. They were good that last game. Pill Cascade is just awesome. Hush was awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. That's we did not run into any opponents playing Hush. And yeah, that's that's where you're that's where uh you're gonna run into some problems if you play against an opponent playing Hush. That'll that'll be sad. Um thankfully we didn't get to we didn't run into any of that. Um Maybe maybe two sh star shaping, one arbiter of the peak. Um, as far as, you know, against like the fast aggro, maybe you just have a second star shaping in there and, and one, and, you know, and one arbiter that could be something against the, the fast aggro decks. I'm not sure. Another option of course is guiding touch only gains two life. So it's not really that much, but it draws a card and it's, you know, really versatile it can heal things and stuff. So that's another option. If you want to just go one ofs, go one guiding touch, one star shaping, one arbiter. That's another option there as well, but yeah, I liked this quite a bit. Or of course, you know, you can play one kindly tavern keeper, I suppose. But I don't know. I don't know. It's going to take quite a, a good hand, aggro hand to, to to defeat you. Like you have some really good anti-aggro cards in here, and so it's going to take quite a good burn hand to defeat you. All right, but there we go. Um, that's it here for Tarek Brom. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd really appreciate it. Got a couple people here in chat trying the deck out. If you try it out later on, leave those comments about it. Um, yeah, I always like seeing that feedback. All right, but thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.